Hello. <laughs> hey, buddy. How are you? I'm good. It's almost like looking into a mirror for a second. We've got the sure microphones, the chestnut <laughs> locks. This is wow. Wow. I shaved my head in uh, about uh, March, uh, and I've just been letting it grow, unfortunately, ever since. So, hey, it looks uh, great. This is the result. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. It's Wait. very mixed reviews from friends and uh, and people that know me, but we're we're making it. Yeah, I didn't realize how much hair length would incite anger and strong emotions in people, but I too. <laughs> This is not my common hairstyle or my usual, and I'd let it grow. And people are like, I hate it. I hate it. Cut it, shave it. And I was like, I don't know what's wrong. Just let it, it, it doesn't look crazy bad. So it's I just don't know. hair. I don't know. I, I'm really much, uh, I'm a sort of an anti getting ready person. I just kind of go, I think Berbiglia had a joke that was like, uh, this is my face and I'm sorry, you know? So I kind of have that. Uh, <laughs> Like, yeah, this is what I this is what I was made with. So we're just, you know, I have to live with it every day. You can handle it for a couple minutes. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm the same way. I like, especially with hair, I don't like to style it, blow dry it, whatever. It's just get out of the shower and then it whoosh, whoosh, and then it's done. <laughs> and then the shoes for me too. That I've had shoes with buckles with with that I have to tie. I like the ones that you can just slip on. Crocs, I didn't quite cross into the Croc territory. At least I'm with proud the of you. Holes. That's a that's yeah yeah that's that that's a dangerous road to go down. Yeah, there's no going back. Once there's photographic evidence, you're done. Kill it. That's cancel culture. That's you're canceled. Finest. Yeah yeah absolutely. It's getting crazy now. Just for <laughs> just for having Crocs. Oh God, I know. So I didn't dare I'd venture into those yet, but. I, my shoes, usually they're just slip-ins like the Vans and then they've got a nice comfy sole and that's just how I live my life. It's, I, I, I hate getting up and then having to prepare things. So it's just snip, yeah. snap, snoop. I used to, I've tried a various different, uh, depending on how many videos you watch, I've had several different hairstyles. So, uh, and you know, I was trying to be like clean cut and sort of fancy and schnazzy and, and it's just, it's so much work and it's net, it, you know, I'm, I'm just not about, I'm just not about that lifestyle, I guess. Do you have a favorite hairstyle, at least look aesthetic wise from the Andrew Rivers collection? You know, <laughs> the Andrew Rivers collection. Um, <laughs> Vogue magazine would say um, <laughs> fall 2015, maybe. Um, Oh, the Fall Rivers. But then it, my it favorite. you know, it just it gets too close to like the the like a white supremacy haircut where you know it's like it's Ooh. like um um you know it's like one half is shaved and the other half is kind of long and and um and if you don't get haircuts at really specific times it the you know it kind of forms into people can imagine you're you're uh, joining the Proud Boys or something like that so. Ah, um, uh, uh, yes, yes, that's. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, like that's, the hairstyle. I just think the Nazi guys have sort of taken it over, you know. <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. It's like no one tries to do the Hitler stash because it's just not worth trying to do a do a renaissance of it. So trying to fight, yeah, trying to fight the 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 preconceived notion that yeah, comes with it. Exactly, the KKK and Crocs. Those are just the two untouchable <laughs> looks. <laughs> But, well, you got to have uh, standards somewhere. That's good. <laughs> oh, God. Well, we are recording, but I, I uh, before I just give it the official stamp of approval for the intro, just wanted to give you a little lowdown of how this is going to go, Andrew Rivers. My name is Stefan. Nice to meet you. And this is a comedy advice podcast. And what we're going to do is we are going to talk a little bit about you, my very special guest, and then we're going to give some advice to some questions that fans have just sent in from all across the barnacles of the internet, as I call them, the Reddits, the Quora's, the Yahoo Answers, all over there. Do so, you have any uh, fans on Parlor right now? Oh, <laughs> I, I, getting I, lots I, of the fan mail. <laughs> yeah, depending, you know, looking at the haircuts that they send in, I think I may have seen one or two. <laughs> So that's how I screen them and get them out of there. But 
yeah good they're, good they're all over the place they are so i have to i have a filtering system which is me looking and reading at all these emails which is sometimes strange and weird depressing and uh shocking but you know I, I get the creme de la creme, the creme de la crap, probably, and then slap it up on here for the episode. So, it's, well, it's uh, an amazing journey, and uh, thanks for having me. Oh, you know what? I'm I a pleasure to have you, and um, have you I will on this episode. We're going to dive into it of a comedy <laughs> right. advice podcast with me, Stefan Satani. Very special guest joining me today. I know that I say that every single time, but this one is extraordinary. Sorry, I'm getting heckled by my Apple Watch right now. <laughs> that just reminded me to turn my phone off to, so I get no, I mean, not that people want to call me anyway, but I just figured I'd do it in case. <laughs> it's nice to have that feeling that they might. I love that feeling yeah. where you turn it off and then you look and you're like, oh yeah, my phone was off. I might get a bunch of emails. And it's like, no, people still hate me. Yeah. So, okay. My brother just literally asked me about dog, dog weed. So um, it's real exciting. Oh, dog weed. Do hold well, on. Yeah, Let his me... dog is like has like anxiety or something like that. So he's like, is there like can we get our dog stoned? I accidentally got the dog stoned once and they liked it. And so <laughs> this is a whole sorry to just derail this whole thing from the start. <laughs> no, no, not at all. Just to get it on the tracks real quick before it plows into the, the ravine. This very special guest today, and the voice you're hearing about getting his dog stoned. He's a comedian that's toured across the globe. He has a dry bar special, Laffy Taffy, that has over 15 million views all across the web. He also has his new special, a pandemic special, and he's a host of the Homeschool Podcast with Corey Michaelis. Everybody, please welcome Andrew Rivers. Yay. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I died a little bit on the rivers part, but I wanted to really accentuate the Andrew because I feel it's a, a nice name. Thank you. People ask me if it's a stage name once in a while. And um, I, could I don't know. That. I can't imagine coming up with a stage name. I, you know, I could see if I imagine Andrew Rivers, I could imagine it was like one of those Irish uh, flogging Molly lead singers. Or something and he's <laughs> singing about going down to Boston. He's like, "Hi, it's Andrew Rivers, about to sing with you today." And uh, <clears throat> but you know, I think you're more of a Andrew Rivers, maybe an Andy Rivers. Yeah, my grandpa called me Andy, but uh, I I prefer Andrew. My mom calls me asshole, but uh, whatever you want to call me, it's uh, <laughs> as long as you're calling me. Obviously, we just talked about my phone doesn't ring very often, so I'm so lonely. Reach out, everybody. This is my cry for help. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, lonely as you may be, I feel like you have crowds of views on the internet, all across the webs, everywhere I see you. Instagram clips of your comedy, Reddit, and the stand-up threads, YouTube, everywhere. People are giving you the love. They're giving you Reddit gold, all this type of stuff. And your, uh, your new pandemic special has over 100,000 views already on YouTube, which is incredible. Incredible. Yeah, that's pretty good. I, was, yeah. I didn't know if anyone would watch it. And then uh, just, you know, that's pretty cool. It's I, nice. well, I watched I watched it twice just to oh, give wow. you, yeah, to, you know, uh, extra support. But I did just two Crocs because you got to have the pair for the extra comfort. But wanted to ask a little bit about it because obviously a <clears throat> pandemic special, it's hard enough being able to work. And I know you uh, had some jokes in there, too, about what you do is illegal and and uh which was which was quite hilarious but being able to do comedy in certain states you can't or in certain areas you can't so even being able to maneuver going on the road and doing shows is a feat in itself so being able to create a special is monumental that's that's a pretty incredible how were you able to do it um <clears throat> i got we got pretty lucky i think that um my sort of stand up story is I started comedy 11, 12 years ago when I got laid off from a marketing job. And mm -hmm. uh, so I think I, I was on unemployment for like two years, literally in 2009, trying to figure out how to do comedy successfully. And then um, mm -hmm. so then when this whole thing happened, I, I live in Seattle, Washington, and, and the state's pretty liberal with their unemployment benefits. So I think I was already in the system. 
And, you know, so it was like some people have had like a hard time getting their benefits, but I think they were like, oh, we knew you'd be back. So what was uh, your hairstyle like then? (laughs) I don't know. Um, Gosh. I'm sure uh, I think it was, yeah, like it was a very fade and like, a yeah, yeah, short. yeah, that's exactly. It's very short, high and tight. Mm. Um, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what an anyway. interesting time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I just we started so immediately, like probably the first week that all sort of clubs got shut down. Mm-hmm. My friend Corey and I started doing a streaming show um just from like a studio and then and then it was like at first we were kind of like hey let's just do our stand-up but then we were like we don't know how long this is gonna last and like you know we're gonna run out of material pretty soon Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) because even if we have an hour and we're doing 10 to 15 minutes each night and you know it just doesn't stretch very long and Mm -hmm. so we decided to sort of try and write like a new monologue style of show and um, which is now what we do for our podcast. So we basically try to, with the, with the idea, the premise being that uh, writing a joke is like taking a selfie. You need a thousand attempts before you have three worth posting. Sure. So we just decide, you know, I think it's in that artist's way book too. If you've ever read that, where they say, don't be afraid of a blank page. And so for me, that was like, just fill it up. It, none of, it's not all going to be amazing, but you know, some of it will be pretty funny and some of it you'll go, Oh yeah, we could have done better. But mm. also like what, you know, if, if 20 people see it, it, you know, what, who, who do we care? So we just started writing and, and, and then um, sort of with the goal being five pages a week between wow. the two of us. Wow. And, um, and then that helped because then we, we still have a little bit of dynamic where we can tag each other's jokes and we can try to um, write together. Um, and then, you know, by the time I think I filmed that thing in October, I had had, well, we, yeah, so clubs opened in Seattle in July and okay. I filmed like a little, I think it was like 14 minutes of new material. And then nice. I was like, okay, well, that's three months from, the first shutdown. And so then I was, you know, by October was like six months had passed. And so I was like, I probably have 20 to 30 minutes of new stuff. And uh, I got booked to headline this. I was supposed to MC at this club actually. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the headliner canceled with three days notice. And so I got promoted from MC to headline and I I headlined for this club before. So they knew me, but I was just Mm -hmm. taking whatever gigs I could. Right. And so um, so I was like, well, it's just going to be a bunch of free tickets and people that don't know me. And so what better crowd for like a comedy special to be like, nice. <clears throat> I don't know. Just I just went for it. And and I mean, some of those jokes in that thing, I had only told maybe three times on stage in front of people. So that was mm-hmm. the other unique thing about, you know, transferring the jokes from your living room to an audience. And uh, and then learning through that process. So, um, yeah, just really hard just being an idiot and and not having anything else to do. And and the government was paying me. So I I felt like I should have something to show for this, you know, bonus bonus. If the government's paying me to be like, stay home and stay safe, (laughs) even though I don't stay home very much. But, uh, you know, I just figured like. (laughs) Hey, they believe in me. They're they're investing in my career, and uh, I want to make them um, uh, not regret it. Maybe that's beautiful. It's you know, it's almost like the government it, the parents giving their children allowance and saying, "Stay home, don't do anything," and then they go out and do <laughs> things, but then they make money out. The maybe they buy weed yes. and then sell yes. it, or, yes. or whatever they do. <laughs> it's by bitcoin i don't know what they're doing and uh, they're gallivanting what the kids are there. doing now yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah investing in dogecoin but you did it man and it's really cool to hear about the process because i did want to also backtrack a little bit on the podcast that you have with Corey michaelis and also some of the clips that i've heard with you speaking with your radio host father oh, okay and, cool um 
I think that it is so cool, your approach on just continuing to just write out not and knowing not everything's going to be perfect, but just going at it anyway. And then I think that mentality and then with not a lot of places to do open mics or really practice those jokes, you've created these canvases, canvas I, I don't know the plural of it, but <laughs> I was going with it. (laughs) You created these Kenvi and the podcast. Like uh, it's one of the best podcasts that I've heard in a long time. Oh, thank you so much. No, I I mean it. Even my own is garbage compared to you. So (laughs) I'm I'm really happy that you're on here because we're different. We're different. We're we're doing different stuff. You know, I think you're inside baseball and, and that that's a huge place for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, that's like the, I remember in high school, the hot girl was telling me, you know, you're like different than the jocks <laughs> that they're like hot and stuff. And you're, but you I know. like your personality, you know? <laughs> so I'm glad I got back to that. That's beautiful. But back to the point, I, I listened to a couple episodes. My favorite was the one with Kelsey cook where God, you guys, like you said, not only are you able to come up with these jokes and create a platform to practice them, but you and Corey are really good at riffing off each other, sometimes roasting each other, and um, just building up, of uh, adding tags on the spot, just really being able to develop these skills so that when you have a special that you're filming, it doesn't seem like some of these jokes, it's the first time you're performing them on stage. It's because when I saw the special, it seemed like those were pretty well polished and there were also some jokes that were i think it was it was in oklahoma too yeah when this, where yeah the yeah i mean recorded. that's the ironic thing is that like i'm a pretty liberal leaning person uh but uh the only states you can perform in are mostly like red states you know and so that was sort of a complication of like i do want to do trump jokes because he's such this enigmatic figure i don't even know if i use that right the word the right way but i can't you know, say the he, plural of canvas so i think you're doing great <laughs> you set the bar so low that i can't possibly <laughs> fuck it up i appreciate it but he's just you know he he was the main focus for the last year especially and so yeah i mean and i think the jokes i did were silly enough that even if you like the guy you can be like he is kind of a dork or whatever Um, and I would, I would try to preface it with like, with like, I know a lot of people don't like Trump jokes and me neither, but that was also the truth is like, I hated watching his thing. Cause I was like, I was like, this is so easy to just watch him and go, Oh, Clorox or whatever. You know, he's such an (laughs) idiot that it was like, it felt like cheating, you know? I think I'm going to use that with friends and relatives when they're like, you don't like Trump? Well, he's kind of a dork or whatever. Yeah. And they're like, yeah. oh, got it. Because it's so yeah. it's so silly, just like the jokes that you made. It's like silly enough where it, the, it's not like, oh, I'm against the point you're trying to make because it's really funny. So I like that. I really like uh, that. Yeah, I think when you try to boil it down to the simplest, I mean, he's a he's a reality show host. And so it was like, he's not, he's not taking any of this seriously, but I think he exposed like some of that stuff that happens in all of politics where it's just like, they're all, sometimes when I look at like the Senate hearings or like little clips, I go, oh, they're performing for the camera in the same way that I am. Like they're hoping to get retweets and clicks and stuff like that. Where like, they don't got their own podcasts where they're practicing on yes. their regulations and speeches and then they go you can there. see them try to like like hit certain notes that they feel like this is gonna kill and i recognize those signs where i'm like oh this is gonna be a big one and then it gets nothing and then you can see them kind of stutter because they were like oh i thought the laughter would help me think of my next line but there's no laughter to cover up my silence you know i'm laughing but i do agree with you i think that that's very true where um, there are some similarities there. And and you also, I mean, you touched on in a very silly way, some of the tensions with racial inequality and injustice, the 
the forgetting your mask and i'm not going to ruin the joke by spoiling it oh thank forgetting you your mask at whole foods that was one of my favorite jokes i i the surprise just hit me i'm because you know after you listen to enough comedy you're kind of yeah. expecting something even if it's not quite what you Im imagined you still laugh a little bit but if it's blindsides you then it, it, that's that's a fun tickler. joke that i haven't told probably since the filming just because I should bring it back now that comedy is sort of we're in phase two in Seattle now. So I maybe have a little friendlier audiences for that type of material. But um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it just the the nerve wracking, uh, like just telling it was like, this is going to be a whole ordeal um, because it's a mix of like shock and laughter and people going like, is he trying to? get an agenda across and like you know yeah. i'm like no i just thought of the silliest thing i could think of and yeah. you know because of i saw all those videos and then you you go like oh that's not dissimilar to the mm -hmm. stuff that just happens to people every day you know so and with all this tension in america in our conscious um in our everyday lives with the protests every night and and that was the thing too, is it was like, there was so much to write about that almost the opportunity to be the first one to have the joke, you know, mm -hmm. when, when everything comes back, you know, it's like, we're all getting the premises at the same time. And, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, none of us can really perform. So this is my chance to maybe edge out some of the bigger comics for, for, uh, you know, a slice of the joke pie, maybe. Mm, that delicious joke pie. Mm. <laughs> Yum. I like, yeah. If you get the first slice, then that's, that's it. You're a winner. Well, awesome. you know, I mean, yeah, I guess a viral video or, or even just, even just the recognition of being like, oh, I'm a good comedian. You know, you need that several times over to be like, oh, I am every, you know, every couple months or every whatever the timeline is for everyone you need a you need a little bit of reassurance along the way to be like okay i'm on the right path you know oh for sure i mean i think the joke pie it's like one of the fundamental foundations of the comedy food pyramid because it's it's <laughs> you you get the reinforcement and the encouragement to be able to get more it builds yeah. instead of feeling satiated you get even hungrier for more joke, joke pie yeah yeah that's a good way to put it um, but I will, I will end with the, the perfect example, I think, and one of my favorite jokes, even though I already said all of them were my favorite. Your jokes are like my children. They're all my favorite. In their own uh, we, I have a favorite, but I won't tell them who, you know? <laughs> but this my one, jokes are like my children. I like to, uh, I like to uh, solicit them for money. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I address them all once and then after my special. I keep them I, locked in a basement and I, uh... <laughs> I yes, I <laughs> uh but the what was it? The um talking about taking down the monuments. Oh, and funny. I thought that was really good and it also to not get people upset. First, you were like, "Hey, look, they they were around for four years. I don't think that's like a high school phase. Yeah. And then and then <laughs> and everyone's just, the people that weren't laughing that might be offended. You're like, but then again, I dated an ex for three months and I'm still writing jokes about her. And three so, years later. Yeah, yeah. I thought um, I thought that was again, delicious. it's very silly and it's very like, you know, if we can kind of compare some of these things and put them in context to events that are maybe more you know, when you're, I don't know when it is, but you know, I didn't even start thinking about our nation and wars and politics and like all that until like very recently in my life. So like, you gotta imagine most people don't really think about like the state and the, you right. know, uh, you know, what the things our country has gone through or, or whatever. And, um, and so just to approach it from a silly way uh, is, is kind of my style, I guess. And um, a funny story about that joke is that it sort of cock blocked me. I don't know if you're a fan of The Bachelor. I, I am, and uh, but, but please go on, yes. Okay, so uh, this girl that I, uh, uh, we're friends, but we went on a couple dates. 
She mm -hmm. um, was interested in getting into comedy. So she was at my house uh, and we were gonna go to an open mic. And I had I was recording the podcast with my dad and she was just kind of hanging out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told that joke. And then she later came to me and was like, it seems like you're not over your ex. So we probably shouldn't be a thing. And I was like, well, I just write, I just thought of the joke. I didn't really think it was, I, I'm not like obsessing over, what, you know, whatever. We never really got to have a whole conversation about like, mm -hmm. but she ended up on The Bachelor this season. And so. Um, Katie from you know, Renton, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the dildo girl. The dild, the, the, yes, going the dildo girl. I, I, so, uh, I'm sure she loves. So it's such a funny, uh, you know, it's a funny thing that I was like, oh, this is a great joke, and then some girl that I liked was like, yeah, I don't really like that, and I'm like, <laughs> now oh, you know she, now you know how someone that sees a Confederate flag feels. Maybe they're like, yeah, I don't really, I don't really appreciate that. You know, you, yeah. you're not over your ex, and I'm like, interesting. That's that's fair. That's very interesting. And it's um, it's interesting because I remember like this week and yesterday, my wife and I were talking and I think we've been together long enough where we can talk about exes and things. And um, we don't. How long is that? Uh, it's been about 15 years. No, okay. I'm kidding. It's, it's been, <laughs> <laughs> we got married at 12 and wow. now no. Uh, no, it's, it's, it has been a while though, about seven Your parents years. solicited you for money and, uh... yeah, yeah, exactly. uh, well, I was like your jokes. My parents yeah. just took me out, <laughs> out of the basement and were like, this is who you're marrying. So, but yeah, we were talking about that yesterday. And then I was bringing back, I was telling my wife about, I was writing and one of my guests is coming up. He's, he writes about his, his parents and their first generation he's first generation american they're from italy and i was like oh my grandma's from italy i speak italian i lived over there a little while i should write about my grandma a little bit and so i was writing about these memories that just un i unlocked or I, I dug them up and i was like man i have not thought about this stuff in so long so when you were talking about your ex it's like i'm i, I don't necessarily have an attachment to these moments but when you write and when you start to think about the past, I feel like it's a beautiful way to remember these things that would otherwise just be covered up with other memories or moments that you're spending scrolling on Instagram or whatever. So I think it's cool in a way that uh, it, it's it's helpful, at least maybe the way I do it um, mm -hmm. for me to because I can rationalize on stage about like why we're not together or like mm -hmm. even though I think back to think back I had one bit about like I think you only remember the happy moments you don't remember the moments of where you know she was yelling at you or, or whatever mm -hmm. um uh so you know but but then to be able to tell some stories to strangers about like the times she was a dick to me and have everyone laugh and then I go see I, like that's why we're not together, you know what I mean? And then, and instead of me wanting to text her all the time, I can have this sort of healthy relationship with our memories and go like, yeah, it was great. And I recognize that over time, I'm gonna wash over these with magical lenses or whatever. Um, but, uh, but it's, you know, it's over there. Right, right. Right now it's just ingredients that you're using in your joke pie. Yeah, I so. mean, I've had this issue too, where like, I just, uh, the way I write sort of, I think about it almost like a slot machine where, you know, if you have the premise and the setup and the third wheel is the punchline, it's just like spinning. Mm -hmm. And you're like, just whatever, whatever it lands on. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even think of the joke. Like, I don't even think about, sometimes I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't, think of what I'm uh, saying. I just know like mathematically that's a good joke. And so I don't, because there's no emotion really attached. Like I have a joke about service dogs and uh, I close one of the, the jokes about like, I saw a woman with an emotional support cat. Cats are assholes in general. The only reason you need an emotional support cat is so it cuts your wrist for you when you're depressed. <laughs> and so, you know, it took, I took a while and then like 
one of my friends finally approached me because I was in this uh, Seattle comedy competition or whatever. And he was like, I can't believe you're closing on a suicide joke. And I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that is a suicide. Like, it didn't even occur to me that someone might be triggered or, you know, when I think that video got like 200,000 views on Instagram and then there were all these comments like, you got to put a trigger warning. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I guess I didn't even I don't even think about that. I'm such an idiot, you know, it's so it's, maybe because it's just so far off from what would actually happen that you don't make that connection, which yeah, may, it's maybe absurdity. a lot of people don't too. There are just some people that if I don't know, it triggers them if they had tried or had thoughts or something sure. like that. And then that's the people that it might trigger. I don't know. So for all the people that I save with my comedy, I hurt just as many as that's what I'm finding out. There always has to be a balance. It's, uh, you know, you want comfy shoes, but you don't want Crocs. You don't want them to look too good and, and not be comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. oh, man. Well, good. Well, Andrew, what I was going to ask before we get into the advice, where, what do you hope to be doing six months from now? And, let's, and an optimistic six months ago, uh, from now saying, we're all vaccinated. We're all good. Yeah, we have eliminated go. the strains. Fairy tale and- land. I'm all about it. <laughs> um, exactly. um i can just say whatever i want because i know none of it's gonna come true but um <laughs> that's manifesting listen no i think <laughs> um right before the pandemic started i had just started um using my dry bar clips which you know got a couple million views i was able to sort of run facebook ads and uh um uh we actually um my dad and i my dad came up with the name Eagles cover band famous basically because I would I would sell about 100 or 200 seats in small cities that didn't have comedy clubs or didn't have Mm -hmm. like a a lot of stuff to do Mm -hmm. and um so if it was like two hours away from Seattle I could sell some tickets but if I was in like Portland or Seattle it would only sell like 40 or 50 tickets which wasn't Mm -hmm. enough to make any profit or whatever and Mm -hmm. so I was talking to my dad like I don't know why I can't sell tickets in big cities. And he was like, people have other options. Your your Eagles cover band famous because the Eagles aren't coming to this city, but the Eagles are coming to Portland. So, you know, when you think about like, if it's between me and Mark Normand, someone's going to be like, yeah, I'll go see Mark Normand over a guy I've never heard of before. So, and that's fair. So my hope is to get back on track with that because I was just... It felt like this breakthrough where I was like, I sold 250 seats in a, the- in a theater, uh, you know, twice over a weekend. And so I was like, oh, this is like a whole side of profitability and also like taking my career in my own hands and, uh, you know, and, and really without having to rely on clubs or, you know, uh, traditional TV credits, you know, I can kind of carve out a space. And so... Yeah, the hope is that I, um, I mean, I'm already, I'm still writing a ton of stuff. I've already um, sort of dropped some of some of the jokes from the 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 pandemic special, um, and so I just hope to have like another batch of new material. I mean, wouldn't it be great to film another twenty minutes in six in a couple months and say, you know, I can I can create about 20 minutes of quality stand up every six months. That's a pretty good goal. That's huge. Maybe, you know, um, so yeah, that's the idea is if, if, if in six months I got another special with another hundred thousand views, that, that would be nice. Um, the vaccine, and, special. Uh, the vaccine special <laughs> or the third wave, who knows? We don't know what's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say one shot only, but I think it's two shots, but <laughs> <laughs> this will be the second yeah the second dose or something you know something like that we'll see well, yeah it's a good the third something. wave the crest of my material i'm not sure mm. we can the crest of my career it's all downhill <laughs> from here <laughs> oh man well i really hope i hope that that all happens because from everything that i've seen you're a phenomenal comedian you've got a process down you're also you're just i i don't want to say this with a negative connotation but like a scrapper in terms of you grind. I, yeah, I've I, I've seen you and and how you um, are on social media, and it's beautiful to see somebody that puts in the work and is able to 
get the types of views that you get. Like to be able to get the the amount of comedy pie that you get, it's amazing to me. So I'm very well, happy. Thank you. You're very welcome. And and the hair is just beautiful, by the way. Oh, While man, we're gosh, I feel like I feel like uh, yeah, we're looking in a mirror. <laughs> And then you just need some handcuffs behind. Oh man, I uh, I've actually got them here. I'm cuffed. Oh, while we're doing you're this. behind. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's just the leash you keep your kids on. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah this is uh, fun. this is about to. Oh well, you know, it's 2021. They can come out anytime they want. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this is just like a two week, uh, two week no shade. I think early on like literally the first 10 weeks of the uh, pandemic, I just let it grow and it, and it, it got real ugly. So uh, I just couldn't really bear it anymore. And well, I was starting this, um, I did this roast battle for uh, helium comedy clubs hosted by Mark Norman and Joe list. And, um, Oh, nice. Yes. Yes. And I, uh, I knew that they were going to rip on me. So I didn't want to give them like extra <laughs> incentive. So I shaved the stash for that also. Oh, that's very fair. One more compliment before we get into the self-help. I just have to say your voice is just premium comedy voice. I feel like the tenor, I feel like the vibrato. It's just- See, now I know you're just lying to me because it's- uh... I, No, no, it's really, it, I could see you doing voice acting if you don't do it already. And- it, Literally me, no one has ever, people ask me to stop talking more than they ask <laughs> me to talk. So. I No, I feel like you honestly, I could see, because I was listening to you on a couple other podcasts and yours, and I was like, damn, his voice, it sounds like a, a he could be the main guy of an animated funny show that's just like, he doesn't know what's going on and um, he's in trouble all the time. To me, it almost sounds like, you have to pee, but we're talking and you don't want to disrupt the conversation because <laughs> you're being polite. And so <laughs> I know it's very specific. Maybe that's, that's, that's not a great. compliment. No, I listen, uh, cause my dad was on the radio, uh, for, you know, 25 years in Seattle at least, but, uh, you know, he was this big radio guy. And so he has that deep voice, the announcer voice and, uh, and uh, my whole life, I've been, I, I'm the son of a radio DJ. So, uh, <laughs> and my brother has a super deep voice and very handsome. And so I feel like I got, I was the last one out. I had all the, I got all the leftovers. And so, uh, uh, but, uh, but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. That's going to cure my insecurities for about three minutes. But, okay. Uh, I, you know what? I was trying for I at need. least five. So I'll throughout <laughs> the show, see if I can right. sprinkle in a couple others, but we're going to get into the advice portion of the podcast. Where we're going to answer some questions before we do. I like to get us nice and inspired with an inspirational quote. None other Love than it. before I give mine, I like to ask my guests just in case they're inspirational quote guys or gals. Do you have an inspirational quote, Andrew Rivers, that gets you through your dark days, helps you on that blank page? I'm glad you asked. Um, I actually am a very much an inspirational quote guy. I uh, started this book when I started comedy, and it's a, and a comedy advice book. And so what Ooh. I would do is have every headliner I meet or work with sign it. See if we can get in there. Oh, Oops, my so God. Like, uh, how do we get this lighting right? Stage so time, like a, Alonzo Bowden. Yeah. So like, um, wow. The, you know, there's everything. There's like Larry the Cable Guy. There's um, um, Ryan Hamilton's one of my favorite pages. Don't compare yourself to other comedians. Only measure your progress against what you know is your own potential. Everyone has their own unique individual path. Only you can find it by following your gut also start a book of advice from the headliners you work with it'll be a valuable resource so um you know that holy shit um that was a sonnet that was beautiful yeah. there's also this is on my facebook page and uh i'm hoping to get it turned into a book someday but uh there's um uh there's one um Gosh, I can't think. Bob Newhart wrote uh, "Just Hang in There." Um, 
one of my favorite yeah. pages is um by another Seattle comedian, Gabriel Rutledge. And uh, he said, uh, be flexible in your definition of success. And that to me is just a perfect end to end sentence that means whatever you want it to, you know, like, you know, sometimes just getting on stage is a victory. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you need to hold yourself to a higher standard than just getting on stage, you know? But depending on where your progress and what you know you're capable of, you know, if, if you meld mm -hmm. all these pieces of pages together, um, you know, you follow your own gut and your own instinct on what you think you should be doing and, and use that as a way to push yourself. And, um, and, and, you know, cause sometimes you get on stage and it, and the, the TVs are on in the bar or, or what are the microphones not working or they're all drunk and you know, they, the headliner they paid to see three days ago canceled and they got free tickets to come see you. Um, like these things just happen in comedy. So, you know, you, you want to do your best given the circumstances and, um, and uh, I think being flexible in your definition of success is is a great way to like we were kind of talking about having these moments along the way for example like probably five years into comedy i got a last comic standing callback audition or whatever. they like flew me down to la and they, they were like this is part of the process and i was like i'm gonna get it i'm the young good looking guy who's got the up and coming material or whatever and i didn't get on but I, to me, I took that as like, well, I'm on the right path and they're looking at me seriously. So they think I'm worth buying a plane ticket and a hotel at least. And so to me, that was a success, even though I didn't get on the show or whatever. So, you That's know, sometimes true. there's things out of your control, you know? Yeah. I mean, some people won't even get dinner bought for them. So I think sure. that's a huge thing. I think it's very important to think about those things because I was just looking at, um, oh my God, it was CBD. No, I'm sorry, not CBD, CBT, <laughs> Cognitive okay. Behavioral Therapy for okay. people with anxiety, where what you do- CBD is also for anxiety. <laughs> that is also, yes, there are multiple CB acronyms for anxiety. This one, more of a, a, um, a, therapy, a therapeutic approach from a therapist perspective, where they change the way that you think so that you approach things. And the whole premise or the whole basis of the therapy is you, it's not the situations that make you nervous and make you anxious. It's the way that you think about them. And so changing the way that you think about them and, and, and making sure that the things you're worrying about are realistic and, um, understanding them better and then also trying to replace some of them with positive thoughts is a really good way that you can start to change your mindset so that you are a more of a positive thinker and less anxious so yeah i don't know if you're familiar with kyle cease at all does that name ring mm -hmm. a bell for you at all no he was a very well-known comedian about 10 years ago but he went a little kooky and uh uh he's like I'm not sure exactly what he's up to. He started down this inspirational speaker role, probably because mm. there's more money than that in comedy. But, uh, but, um, but he was doing these like comedy boot camps for new comics or whatever, and it was kind of a ripoff. But, mm -hmm. but I got to attend for free because uh, he was just he was nice to me. But, uh, but anyway, he always uh. had a thing that was like people are afraid because they imagine. They're not afraid of being on stage. They're afraid of people's reactions. They're afraid of people like booing them or going get off stage, which never happened. Like rarely, mm -hmm. you know, maybe in 12 years, maybe twice I can think of. But uh -huh. um, so like he, he used to say, like, imagine instead that when you're done, everyone's going to break their legs and their hands from standing and clapping so fast that they loved you. And because that's just as absurd as the other thing. And so when you go like, oh, yeah, it is. It's almost uh -huh. a discussion of like the way the media is trying to influence you not to get too like political in, in you know, but like um, if there, you know, the the COVID thing, oh, it's 
the death counter going up and now it's like they don't really talk about the deaths anymore because they're like well we're trying to calm things down and trying to get back to go even though the levels are close to what they were for most of last year mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but if there was um and uh you know if there was like a every time there's a plane crash there's like 15 hours of news coverage and oh my god if there was the same news coverage every time a plane landed safely when you think about the miracle of flight a lot of people wouldn't be as scared of flying yeah. maybe that's i mean a very good point it's it's a little when you start to really think about it it's like well you should still be scared of flying because you're in a giant tube and it's scary but you know when you start to think about things in the realistic possibilities like you know people it's 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 fine calm down yeah <laughs> maybe i think I, don't know. I like that it's fine calm down it's, it's gonna it's, be fine you'll most likely be okay all right well We're probably okay what a fascinating quote and or set of quotes thank you andrew and um yes. i will make sure to not trip over you in terms of copyright infringement. If I ever make a book, a comedy advice podcast, maybe I'll do take, a hyphen. Listen, take it all and uh, and then I can sue you for uh, all the credit. So maybe, maybe I'll do a comedy <laughs> advice pod, a comedy advice comic book and then, uh, okay. or, or novel. Or we can work together. I mean, you have the, you have the brand comedy advice podcast and now you come out with a book. Cause I'm not, I'm the, I'm just the brains behind the operation but I don't know how to like write a book that people can digest. So you maybe you help me translate it for the common oh, folk. Oh, I know, like that. I like that. And, yeah. and I can make it into an audio book as well. I can do you like have the, the perfect voice. Oh, man. A comedy advice book by well, I fucked up on the words already. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It's the first draft. We can't expect to get it right off the top. <laughs> yeah, you can't expect to get the third word right right off the bat. Yeah, come on. Let's Jeez. All right. Well, be flexible in your definition of success. <laughs> oh, and here we are full <laughs> circle. Well, beautiful quote. And I'm going to share my inspirational quote. It's actually not by any comedian, not by any philosopher. It's actually by a robot. And the robot's name is Inspirobot. So I listened to your podcast with Kelsey. So uh, I'm uh, familiar with this one. Oh, okay, perfect. And for those first time listeners, Inspirebot is a robot whose sole purpose is to use AI to take some of the wisest words known to man or woman and just interweave them together for a beautiful inspirational quote. Now, Andrew, I'm gonna read this one and then you can tell me what it means to you, okay? This week, Inspirebot says, <laughs> perfect, getting ready. <clears throat> a glass of wine, you got to respect it. A glass of wine, you got to respect it. <laughs> I died. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll find something. We'll make, we'll make, we'll make something out of grapes here. Um, <laughs> Whoa. All right. Yes, it was for meant to be. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think a glass of wine, you always got to respect the glass of wine. Just not even go into your any glasses metaphors. of wine. You're, you're, you're doing. <laughs> It's been <laughs> quite a pandemic. It's been, yeah. No judgment. I'm a CBD guy myself, but to to do whatever you want. It's like the big gulp of Merlot now. That's what I do. I think just they call that a gulp. bottle. I think you just say bottle. <laughs> now it's Merlot slushies. I just go to Circle K. That's, and just... that's pretty cool idea, actually. Oh, that might Write that, that down. Hey, that might be good. The, it's it, not a bad idea. The sour grape slush. Didn't it? Uh, did it snow where you were? You're in Arizona, maybe, right? Yeah, in Phoenix, it there was no snow. Oh, okay, bummer. Close. Yeah, <laughs> it got down close to like 50 degrees, but it oh, needed okay. another 18 to get there. So yeah, bummer. Yeah, but anyway, I, I was gonna go. So back to the one. I feel like after a hard day of work or when something really stressful happens, my wife usually likes a tall glass of wine. And I feel like you have to respect it because if you are acting carelessly with your glass of wine, that glass of wine will spill, <clears throat> the glass will break, it will shatter, you'll stain things. Bam, go ahead. See, Andy, this please. is the direction I was gonna go to is, um, 
respect the power of the wine. Uh, intoxicating feelings, you know, drunk mm -hmm. driving, drunk texting. I have a big bit about drunk texting um, an ex-girlfriend. So I'm, I'm really into like respecting. My dad's been sober 30 years, so. It also I'm sounds really... like you're not over your ex. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Cause I drunk, I text her every time I drink, but uh, uh, it's just, you gotta respect the power of the wine to make you think that way. Um, yeah, man, you gotta respect the power of these things to manipulate you. And, uh, and so the, whether it's the news or the wine, I think you gotta respect it. Oh, I think that's- And take, yes. it, take it seriously and, and, you know, stay alert maybe. I, if you see something, don't drink something. I think that if it, it's very potent. That's like a great example for me, by the way, of like hitting the slot machine and you don't know where it's going to land on. <laughs> and I, it's a, that's how I think like you have that first line and you go, I already said it. Let's just see what happens. And, and sometimes it's all sevens and sometimes it's that joke. But, you know, it's yeah, fine. So, so, <laughs> I, I appreciate you rewinding to shit on my my garbage <laughs> slot machine joke that was beautiful but you know it, it is but I you gotta respect say, it yeah yeah you gotta respect it and i will say i feel like over the past couple of months or so i've lost the fear of saying things without knowing where the end is and so that's just happened and similar to wine you don't know where the end is going to be. Is it going to be one glass of wine? Will it turn into two glasses? And so the cup overfloweth with intoxication. So you got to be able to manage yourself and, and respect it and say just one drink tonight. And you got to mean it because some people say just one drink and then it turns into five, six. I have a whole bit. Uh, two drinks is the new midnight because nothing good happens after midnight. You know what I mean? So you got to. Like, and ever since I started doing that joke, when I hit two drinks, I find myself going like, let me look around, let me make sure that I can get home. Let me, you know, at the very least, check in with yourself and respect it, you know? I like it. This exactly. this bot is wiser than it than than people give it credit for, I think. You, Andrew, by the way, since we're co-venturing on a book, maybe we could also co-venture on a wine glass where as it tips, as you continue to gulp down the wine, at the very bottom, there's a message for you. It can be inspirational, or it can be a message that's like, you said just one. And so <laughs> when you see it as you're finishing, it Gosh. reminds you. I hate to uh, spoil your uh, thunder there. Someone made this for me after one of my shows for, for my joke, because it follows the two drink oh! timeline. My and thunder so, uh, is spoiled. Damn. <laughs> ah, you have to throw out my thunder. No, nah, it's a great idea. I mean, this is a one of one. So if you want to work, we can work together on making a line, a line. You know, we got to get a franchise mm. or whatever they call it. Yeah, there you go. You know what? But, but it th just goes to show that you're thinking along the, al you're in the right direction, you know? I'm thinking outside that's, the wine glass. That's or actually affirmation. inside it this yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. So, beautiful. <laughs> All Your right. ideas are valid and worth pursuing. Is that that's a message from that glass right there? Oh, beautiful! And you know what? Maybe we could we could instead of just the message, it could be a vocal message. So as the liquid with the robot, you you get the robot and you uh, you know you get it to speak the uh, the the me as soon as you finish your drink, it gives you a, a motivational um, text or oh. whatever. Oh my god. Gosh, I love this. Why I mean, we... and we should just quit this and file the patents right now. I was going to say the same thing. Thank you, everybody. Please subscribe, leave a review, follow <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> watch his special. All right. Now that we're nice and inspired, like really inspired, we're going to dive into the questions. Inspired. <laughs> this first question, it's from Reddit. It's found by our fan, Ian. Thank you, Ian. It says, how do I get a white mud stained shirt completely clean? Last week, I was out and got really muddy. I forgot about the shirt and left it a few days before even washing it. It's been washed and cleaned and dried and everything, but it's still brown AF. What can I do? I love this shirt a lot, and I'm really sad the stain hasn't lifted yet. 
Well, I would approach the uh, elders at your KKK meeting and uh, see if they have any replacement sheets or, or shirts that uh, that you can. Um, because uh, I'm not going to give you a good laundry uh, advice. I'm not a good. I shrink clothes regularly and uh, I just throw stuff away all the time because stains get stuck. And then I'm like, I'm I guess that's ruined forever. So uh, you, I'm I think disrespect. I'm going to pass the buck on this one. And oh, OK. Uh, and yeah. So it's a wash is what you're saying. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think I know nothing about laundry as well. So I would say buy it if, if it's just a plain white shirt. Yeah. Unless it's like your special edition clan sheet, I would say, hey, maybe that's a sign that you got to you, you should not be wearing that. And then if it's a white shirt, just a plain old Hanes medium fit tee or maybe a cut tee slim fit, go and buy a new one. It's yeah. time. Sometimes you have to turn over a new leaf or <laughs> turn down an old shirt and then buy a new five pack. And I think, you know, what I think better this way is a lesson to respect the mud. You know, you got to respect the mud. R respect that tall glass of mud that you fell in. Also, respect yourself. What are you doing falling in mud? I was out and got really muddy. What are you doing, bud? Sliding down them. Take your shirt off, too. That might yeah, be mud thing. wrestling. What, you know, what were you running from a sniper? Like, what, you know, how do you find yourself so muddy in the first place? Maybe you need to reevaluate the decisions that you got you to this place. I just imagine a guy at army camp after he gets back with his friends. He's like, oh, my shirt's so muddy. <laughs> so muddy. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Well, I think that was some pretty solid advice. So I hope that stays with you like the mud stains I think we that are on your shirt. Yeah, pretty good. All right. So next segment, this is called Positive Spin. And I alluded little bit to it earlier not on purpose but serendipitously but positive spin it's all about training your mind to think right because sometimes when bad things happen to us we think about the bad things and in positive spin i'm going to give you a bad scenario where you andrew rivers are going to have to think of something positive so you're training your mind to start thinking i love it right all right <clears throat> i need to find a more succinct way to talk about that but you know what i get it yeah. Okay. Perfect. It's encapsulated. Uh -huh. So this, Andrew, you in this scenario, I don't know what you did. Maybe you did some, maybe it was a bad joke against old Zuck Zucks, but you get banned from Instagram and Zuckerberg DMs you right before. And he says, look, <laughs> I don't like you or your style or your mustache. <laughs> you talked about Crocs on a podcast too. I didn't like that. You're off Instagram. You can still use Facebook because that's weird, but you can use all other social media platforms, but Instagram is off limits for life. Andrew. I think that's a, uh, a sign that I need to stop stalking my ex's Instagram account. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure if I screenshotted the tweet from Zuckerberg in time or the DM, I'm sure if I screenshotted that in time, I could get, I could get some clout on my other socials just by saying, Zuckerberg personally unfriended me. Um, like he took oh. the time to DM me and say, I hate you. That should give me some street cred. I think that would be the best case scenario. Actually, this is the, this I'm actually hoping for this to happen because that would be such a glorious event that, uh, I think just that story alone would be at least five new minutes of material. And, um, you know, and then maybe my ex would want me back because she's like, oh, I didn't know you and Zucks were like tight like that. You know, like I, I misjudged you maybe. And that's, uh, yeah, that's beautiful. Um, so I'm going for tons of positive thoughts there. I also love the take on it because I feel like you would get clout in the other areas where you could just say that you got zucked on on Instagram. I and I think, think Instagram is like a dying. I don't know. It, it feels like maybe just because people don't follow me there as much anymore. But uh, <laughs> it feels like TikTok is the new like space where uh, it's happening for comedy. Yeah, I I think I agree with that. I've started to be on TikTok a little bit more to see and I I've seen comedians their bits just going wild on TikTok. And so Instagram 
Instagram, I feel like they're trying to do too many things on there where they have the reels now, they had the stories, they have uh, uh, collections. Yeah. They've got all these things where they're just try they're putting on so much makeup. And we're like, Instagram, I don't even know who you are anymore. I miss old Instagram with the just plain white shirt and the Crocs. But now you've got mud stains and you've got the fancy Louis Vuittons. And now I don't know what's going on. You're, you're different, Instagram. And so I feel like if we get zucked, it, that would be a, a blessing in disguise. So, yeah. Agreed. Okay. Well, very positive. You passed the test. I don't think anyone's <sighs> failed, but you did real good, Andrew. So we're going to move Thank on you. to the last question. And so this much is pressure. from... Yeah I, yeah, I mean, I didn't want you to mess up. Otherwise, I would have had to just stop the podcast <laughs> right there. But you did it. You did it. No. And uh, we're going to move on to the last question. It's found by our fan, Jess. Thank you, Jess. And it's she found it on Quora. It says, I accidentally threw away my wife's wedding ring with the trash, which was picked up four days ago. Is there anything I could even do to retrieve it at this point? Uh, do you even need details? I think we could just leave it at that if you want. Um, I'm interested to hear what other details. All right. The, dive into this the person details. thinks that are necessary. The ring was hidden in a little envelope, which I mistook as junk. So I threw it away. She kept it there for safekeeping because her fingers are bloated and couldn't wear them. This morning when she looked for them, she discovered them missing and realized I'd thrown them away. She's distraught. And I feel so bad. Trash was picked up Friday morning and it is now Tuesday morning. Is there anything that I can do? Oh, I say blame the wife. If I don't know what this, she, if she wouldn't have let her. Is. Yeah, if she wouldn't have let herself go so much, uh, maybe the <laughs> ring would still fit. <laughs> yeah, blame Miss Fat Fingers over here. I don't know. Jeez, what's going on. I mean, uh, maybe if you would have pulled out, she wouldn't be pregnant and bloated. <laughs> um, there's lots of blame to go around here. Um, who's hiding the ring in the envelope? That's the main question that I, I you know. The only person that I ever knew that did that was uh, Gandalf the Grey when he was trying to hide the ring from Bilbo Baggins. Other than that, were they on a quest? Maybe that's important to the story. Oh, were they trying to destroy the ring in the first place? Were they going to now... bring it to the volcano and throw it in there? Or, or um... did she just want to put it on again after she stopped bloating with her fingers? <laughs> Maybe, dude, maybe this is the perfect example or the perfect opportunity for you to be like, oh, I was going to get you a, a new, new ring, ring yeah. that's like a plus size ring for your big finger. <laughs> I went to, uh, I went to, uh, what's the, um, I went to, what's the name of the, uh, gosh, this, that would have been a great poll. Um, it's okay. I can edit it in post and it's going to sound. No, amazing. it's so, no, I think, I think. <laughs> Showing the process of finding the joke is fun too. What's the? Is there like a plus size store, uh, like big and Lane tall Bryant. for men? There you go. Yes, yes. he he went w w ring shopping at Lane Bryant. <laughs> ring Bryant. Put those two seamless <laughs> ring Bryant. There you go. Um, uh, yeah, I don't. Um, maybe a ring pop. She seems to like the sweets a lot. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I, and then I if she loses it it's not a big deal you know maybe this is why we can't have nice things do you not have a jewelry drawer or um you know somewhere that you would normally maybe maybe this is your sign to get us a, a safe keeping box for things that you just need to store maybe this is also a lesson for you to open up envelopes before you throw them away because some uh, of those might be bills for that ring you just bought Exactly. You might be at $10,000 of credit card debt, but you don't know because you keep throwing away those envelopes. Or maybe it's a bunch of free money. You could have bought a whole new ring. Oh, my God. You could have gotten a new car. You could have maybe gotten... it was your stimulus check. Yeah, who knows? Oh, man. If you're skimming on the stimmy check because you just skimmed through the mail, bro, not, not good. Not good. Terrible. Oh, man. You I feel so bad. Yourself. I think I've heard stories of people finding a ring like that late, like, but I just don't believe it. I don't believe in it. I'm not, if it's me, I'm not going to dig through the trash. I'm going, hey, our love is strong that we don't need a ring to signify. Oh, you know what you could do, Andrew? You could, you could tattoo the ring across the finger. Some people do that, right? 
Yeah, I've heard. I think like Beyonce did that or something like that. Probably. That's why she's not divorcing Jay Z. He's cheated on her thousands of yeah, times. Yeah, because it's a like, tattoo. Yeah. She's like, well, it's forever. Hey, only I don't one confirmed regret time. It. I think. <laughs> What are we, TMZ spreading rumors over here? I don't know. <laughs> I, I know I know nothing about Beyonce and Jay-Z <laughs> except for its surfboard. But um, other than that, yeah. So tattoo might be something. But to that point, if you guys get divorced. Maybe this is the sign you needed to get divorced in the first place. You the know? harbinger of the big You D. really want this girl, you know killing all your gas mileage by weighing the car down and um um <laughs> you i i think it's time to stop passing the envelope and time to start recognizing that you need to divorce this this person cuz you guys aren't communicating correctly obviously if you can't figure out an envelope wedding ring scenario you're done like how do you raise your kids you one of you guys are gonna forget them in the grocery store because the other one's gonna be like, Oh, I thought it was in the envelope. Oh, I threw it away. And yeah, I've thrown away a lot of my kids that, that way. They're in socks and I just forget about them. And uh <laughs> I mean when it's joke. crunch time, you really gotta <laughs> yeah, it's crunch time. Oh guys, <laughs> way to tag it. I love it. <laughs> just double oh. down. <laughs> oh man. Well. I, I know that this sucks for both of you guys, but I, I think that you'll figure it out. Think of the positives. Maybe get her a toe ring so she can't take it off. Or <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, a cock there... ring for him, you know? Oh, oh, to wear all the time. Or put yeah. it in the envelope when he's not using it. I mean, I think we got to find a better solution for storage than an envelope. I think that's a, an important takeaway. I agree with that. I think Frodo Baggins, going back to the Lord of the Rings, because I tend to do that every episode, it seems, he wore it round his neck, like a necklace. I've seen, like, um, you know, like football players, they wear, like, these rubber rings sometimes, or, like, athletes, they wear, like, specific, like, athlete-designed rings, you know? Maybe you could get her that one and signal that you want her to participate in a more active lifestyle before That's she, a per she buys the next ring. That, that's perfect because that's like yeah. I'm committed, but I want you to be committed to losing some weight. It's like buying the gym pass, but with romance. Yeah. Almost like buying her a ring again and being like, uh, hey, when you can fit into it, you can have it. Oh, yeah. she, she puts it on her vision board with all the other. Yeah. Things all right well ring ring goes the bells of advice <laughs> and that is Class the end is of our over <laughs> yes this is done but before we go andrew i just wanted to say a huge thank you for jumping on the pod i love it thanks for having me and uh and thanks for doing the podcast it's an enjoyable watch and listen oh appreciate that and i also wanted to ask you where can people find you? What have you got going on? What would you like to plug? Just Andrew J. Rivers on uh, whatever app. Uh, probably not Instagram for long, but... Um... You're going to get sucked. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, just Andrew, uh, Facebook, Adult Friend Finder, whatever service that you uh, subscribe to. I'm on there and uh, just subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's the big one that... Uh, trying to get more active on and uh, post videos all the time. So uh, check out the pandemic special and check out the dry bar special. Check out, you know, check out, uh, just go watch other company. Go, don't even watch me. Go watch, uh, you know, fun <laughs> stuff. Is, go, you know, go, go, is, go enjoy life. Go outdoors, get some sunshine. Oh, man. Fresh air. It, Andrew Rivers going down every stream possible, every riverbed. This is <laughs> plugging everything. Delta. Yeah. Oh man. Oh, very fluid. We um. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, love it. I just can't hey. help it. It's a sickness. It's fun. I love it. Uh, but it's all going to be in the show notes for all you listeners that are just lost and alone and needing guidance. Just go on in the show notes and click right there everywhere you can find links to this the special to follow andrew rivers 
or just other comedy that I'm going to find that's funny. I'll just put that there too, since Andrew suggested. I'm just kidding. F that, because nobody else was a guest on this podcast except for Andrew Rivers on this episode. So Check kidding. out Corey. Corey Michaelis, my best friend. We podcast together. He's got a dry bar special. Go watch him. Oh, not yet. He's going to have to guess okay. on the podcast. Okay. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Watch him too. <laughs> watch him on your podcast, um, Homeschool, which is there you go. an amazing podcast. All right. Well, Andrew, if you want to stay on for like 30 seconds afterwards and saying goodbye to the audience, awesome. Audience, hey, guys. You guys did awesome. It, such good listeners. Thank you so much. Please support Andrew, support me. And um, I'll talk at you next week. Arrivederci. Ciao. Bye. Okay. Hey, audience. I okay. uh, hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, uh, I really appreciate the three of you who made it this far into the podcast. So I expect three new Instagram followers or um, bad things or will else. happen. Or else. Or else Don't we're going to play some duck, duck, zuck, zuck, goose. And zuck, you're gonna zuck, go, goose. <laughs> you're going to go, you're blocked. Gotcha.